Good evening everyone and welcome to an Oz Cyclone Chasers Cyclone video update today the 27th of January 2016. My name's Chris Nitzo. This update sponsored by our major sponsor Campbell Scientific Australia when measurements matter. Folks there's a lot of weather going on around the country so I'm not going to talk about all of it because I really want to focus in on one particular region which is just off your map at the moment. But Across inland Queensland, we've got a fairly deep trough system. We've got an upper level trough developing in the area too. So all of that is enhancing the shower and thunderstorm activity. And you can see it here, very deep convection associated with that trough system. Some of these showers and thunderstorms will become severe over the next few days. So please pay attention to any Bureau of Meteorology warnings in the coming few days because they there definitely is the potential for some very severe activity over the next 48 to 72 hours. As we go up into the Gulf of Carpentaria, we can see these little convective blooms developing as the afternoon progresses. Same sort of thing happening up here in the Northern Territory's top end region. And then as we go to the WA, and this is where most of our update will focus in on today because this is where it's all happening. WA, we're starting to see just offshore here, development of a very weak low along a trough line. The monsoon trough is out in this area. It hasn't progressed eastwards to Australia yet. It should do so at some stage in the next week week but uh, for now what we're watching is this tropical low uh, that is forming here it's expected to consolidate and drift southwards the Bureau of Meteorology has now issued a tropical cyclone watch for the northwest part of the WA coastline and let's take a look at that now so tropical cyclone advice number one issued by the Bureau of Meteorology in Western Australia shows the tropical low up here around about a hundred and 17 south and around about 12 to 13 degrees. Let me try that again. Come on, Nitzo. Around about 12 to 13 degrees south and around about 117, 118 degrees east. Now, this particular low is not a very symmetrical system at the moment. It's not tightly wound. It's not going to intensify very quickly over the next uh, 12 to 24 hours, but it will gradually deepen. And the system is expected to drift to the south, southwest to south. Uh, if, it will eventually take a slight south-southeast wobble. Uh, now, whether or not that becomes a marked movement here to the south-southeast, we're not quite sure yet, but modelling has been trending further and further west with each run. So initially this time yesterday, if the Bureau were to put, plot this track map, the actual track would have been east of Port Hedland. Tonight, as they plot the track map, it's just west of Port Hedland. As I say, the computer modelling is slowly just drifting westwards a little bit with each run. Alrighty, so taking a look at some of the computer model track forecasts, uh, right now we're looking at the 72 hour time frame and that is Saturday morning and we can see the low pressure system here just off the coast of Port Hedland and tracking in this southerly direction. Now this is using the FIM model. Using the NavGem model here we can see very similar type of scenario where the, the NavGem model keeps this as a fairly elongated system. That means it's oval shaped. That means it's unlikely to become a cyclone if it's oval shaped. But the problem with using this computer model is it's not very accurate. It's not one of the more accurate ones we have in the world. But I just want to show you some of the variations in what could happen here into days two and three. As we start to look progressively at the more accurate models, we can see the CMC computer model here has the system just east of Port Hedland, around the Port Hedland to Pardu area, and has the system as a very weak cyclone or a very deep tropical low as it makes landfall. Looking at the GFS forecast model, we can see that by Saturday morning the system's still well offshore here and it won't be onshore until Saturday night, but same sort of area here just to the west of Port Hedland, very similar to the Bureau of Meteorology track maps. The GFS model keeps it as a low pressure system. As we go to model number two in accuracy, this is the UK Met model. This comes in second in terms of accuracy globally, and it does quite well in Australia, believe it or not. So uh, we have the system here located right in or just around Port Hedland, just to the west of Port Hedland, actually. Uh, and we see the system as a marginal Category 1 tropical cyclone. We have some extremely heavy rain here on the western flank of the system. So these white areas are areas of over 100 millimetres over 24 hours. Uh, the grey areas are 50 to 100 over 24 hours. So you can see that the expectation is that this system not only will uh, pack a little bit of a punch in terms of winds, so winds could be up around that 30 to 40 knot mark, uh, but we will see it really pack a punch in terms of rainfall, bringing in a lot of tropical moisture, and you can see 
vast areas here of Western Australia uh, going to see rainfall from not not necessarily directly from this system but really as a byproduct of the westerly and northwesterly winds that will be coming in from the northern side of it. So you've got to remember that a tropical cyclone uh, circulates in a clockwise direction. That means the winds rushing in towards the cyclone are coming in at that angle too. So we're going to see westerlies and northwesterlies all through this, uh, all through this region pumping in deep tropical moisture. And on top of that, we'll have a surface trough system through Western Australia here, and that tropical moisture will be uplifted not only by the forcing from the cyclone, but also the surface trough as well. So we've got a combination of, of, of things here that are going to be working uh, together to create some really meaningful rainfall across northwestern half of WA or northwestern quadrant of WA. Just as a side note for you Queenslanders, you can still see that trough system here on Saturday still creating a lot of mischief in terms of showers and thunderstorms storms quite widespread throughout the state or throughout the eastern half of the state. The other area of enhanced weather that we probably should mention is this northeastern part of the top end and the northern parts of Gulf of Carpentaria. Going to see a lot of forcing there, a lot of convergence at the surface. We're going to see a lot of rainfall in that in that area. And when we look at rain maps, you'll see this area here is expecting a lot of rain over the next four to eight days. No tropical lows yet, but we will need to watch that area of convergence as it happens because it wouldn't take much for a tropical low to start. The next tropical low, by the way, after this cyclone or after this low in WA is expected to form here near the Solomon Islands and start tracking in a west-southwesterly direction in around about 7 to 10 days' time. At this stage, modelling keeps it very, very weak. Finally, as we move towards our go-to model, the, U the European model, the number one in the world, we can see that at 10am on Saturday, the system lies just offshore of Port Hedland, tracking in a southerly direction. You can see the track here, and is expected to make landfall on Saturday night, uh, as I say, just to the west there of Port Hedland. So the Bureau of Meteorology track forecast closely mirrors the track expected from the Euro and the GFS, uh, two of the major global computer model. Looking at the deep layer means, this is the this is what we look at here when we're starting to look at steering flow for the system. And we can see that the steering flow should be south to maybe even south-southwest. Uh, and at the moment, at least over the next 24 hours, there's a big upper ridge up here, a big upper level high, and that's going to create that southerly motion on the system. There's another little trough or a trough here that this system's attached to, and that's going to complicate the steering a little bit. Uh, so normally we would be quite confident on a south-southwesterly motion, but because it is attached to this trough here, if the trough moves east a little, we'll see a more southerly to south-southeasterly motion. Uh, so it is a little bit difficult and a little bit more complex than what normally we would expect here of WA systems. But in general, a southerly trough track forecast for the next 24 to 48 hours is really expected. I would be very surprised if we see anything other than that southerly track. But it's those little subtleties along that track that are going to make all the difference in terms of where this system is going to go. Is it going to hit Port Hedland? Is it going to hit Caratha? Uh, is it going to go east of those two areas? Uh, you know, we just don't know yet. It'll depend on some of those subtleties of the track. And also, where the actual low-level circulation centre forms and how quickly it tightens up will have some impact on or, or some bearing on where the system will actually go. Alrighty, looking at some of these rain maps across northern Australia, we can see this trough system across Queensland today creating showers and thunderstorms, very obviously, uh, very obvious on our weather centre earlier in the broadcast. And we can see just general showers and thunderstorms here across northern parts of WA and the Northern Territory. Now, as we go to tomorrow, we can see this heavier rain tomorrow as we start to see the low consolidating. Uh, we can see that the northerly moisture pumping into the trough systems inland here are going to create scattered showers and thunderstorms across parts of the Pilbara, Gascoigne and uh, parts of the Western Kimberley as well. The trough system across Queensland continues to generate scattered showers and thunderstorms across the southern half and the northern half of the state. The central part of the state expecting to see less activity than the two extremities. As we look to Northern Territory, we can see isolated the scattered showers and thunderstorms again, mostly in the Arnhem District tomorrow, uh, which is quite unusual. We don't normally see them uh, focused on, in on the Arnhem District. It's usually more the Darwin Daly District that we see most of those storms uh, actually focus on. As we go to Friday, we can see that that low and the very heavy rain associated with that low is starting to drift southwards on Friday, uh, getting closer to the coast. We can see moderate falls now of rain developing right across the the Kimberley and Pilbara regions. 
And once again, the reasoning behind that, deep tropical moisture coming in on the northern side of that low all the way through to the uh, central to northern parts of the Kimberley even. Uh, but the area of main focus will be on that western semicircle of the low itself. And that's why we're seeing those really heavy falls offshore still uh, while the low remains offshore. Now you can see those falls of rain also extending into the Gascoigne region. That's associated with the trough system. And once again over Queensland, scattered showers and thunderstorms. Remember, of course, the p possibility there on Friday of some severe cells associated with that trough system. You don't quite see it. You don't quite get a feel of it when you're just looking at the rain maps. But this trough system will be quite vigorous. And if I had more time, I'd talk a lot more about it. But uh, I don't have time. So just be aware if there are weather warnings from the Bureau of Meteorology on the Friday particularly, uh, please be aware and please take precautions if you are under one of those storms. Subscribers, I'll have an update for you, the Queensland situation on Thursday night for you as well, so we'll, have, we'll be able to hone in on some of those uh, storm hotspots. Up here in the northern parts of the northern parts of the Gulf of Carpentaria, as I mentioned to you, we're going to start to see enhanced convergence up here. Now, at this stage, not expecting to see a low pressure system, but whenever we have strong convergence, when we have strong winds coming together at the surface, uh, we could see something spark up there with very little warning. So it is uh, certainly an area that we'll be keeping an eye on as we go to Friday. Uh, obviously, with this being our major focus and it, uh, of attention. On Saturday, we can see that the low or cyclone is now onto the coast here of uh, WA and we can see those moderate to heavy falls here, particularly in the eastern parts of the Pilbara, but possibly extending further to the west, dependent of course on the actual uh, trajectory and positioning of the low itself. Once again, you can see this trough system pushing south or bringing this moisture all the way down to the south here, even as far south as Geraldton, possibly even Perth as well, in with a chance of a shower and storm on the Saturday. Quite unusual for them. You can see conditions starting to stabilise in the Kimberley region as they uh, as they will be in a temporary area of a descending air, and therefore very difficult for storms to develop in that sort of uh, that sort of descending motion of the air. Up here in the Arafura Sea and the northern Gulf of Carpentaria, we can still see this enhanced area of convergence. So once again, not expecting a low there, but anything can happen in that situation. You can see the trough across Queensland still creating very uh, very scattered showers and thunderstorms, as well as severe cells in that mix. And generally over the northern half of the Territory, we continue to see showers and thunderstorms. The monsoon trough, rather than pulling all the way south here, will then start to reorganise up here north of the North Kimberley coastline and extend westwards into the northern, oh, sorry, eastwards into the northern Gulf of Carpentaria. As we go to Sunday, you can really start to see the monsoon trough here now reorganising itself right here near the top end coastline and extending eastwards into the Gulf of Carpentaria. As I say, uh, don't be surprised if we do see a spin up here with very little warning uh, because of the strength of that convergent flow in this area. And you can see here the possibility of some very heavy rainfall here on Sunday, very close to the northeast Arnhem district. You can also start to see some of that shower and thunderstorm activity, monsoonal shower and thunderstorm activity, making its way onto the far northwestern parts of the peninsula. That trough across Queensland still creating scattered showers and thunderstorms, particularly over the southern parts of the state. Once again, the possibility uh, for some severe cells in that, but the possibility is lessened here on Sunday compared to, say, Friday uh, and, and possibly Saturday. The tropical cyclone is now well and truly inland, or tropical low is now well and truly inland and tracking in a south-southeast direction after it hits the coast. So expected to track in a southerly direction generally uh, throughout its forecast life cycle, but uh, in, once it crosses the coast and starts to head inland, expected to move in more of a southeasterly trajectory, or rather heading. If we start to look at the next two weeks worth of rainfall, and you can definitely see the monsoon starting to have an influence, particularly over the northern and northwestern parts of the of the nation. Uh, a little bit less of an influence here over the northeast parts of Queensland just yet. Uh, it's a little bit too early as we go into the 5th or 6th of February for its effects to be fully witnessed on the northeast coast, but we're certainly starting to witness them here on the northwest coast with falls generally over 150 millimetres in the next two weeks expected over coastal regions of the Kimberley and coastal regions of the northern and northwestern parts of the Northern Territory. Once again, as a side note, just looking at this a little weak low here that is expected on the ensemble modelling to be located just in the far northern Coral Sea, tracking in a west-southwesterly direction out to day 10. But we are looking out to day 10, and there's a lot that's going to happen between now and day 10 that can change that forecast. 
Above all, as I mentioned, it's expected to remain quite weak. Now, just having a look at it here, develops near the Solomons uh, around about day seven, and then moves east. Uh, sorry, moves west, and then west southwest, and you can see it here in the northern uh, Coral Sea. But as I say, 1,008 hectopascals, certainly nothing to worry about. It's just a weak low. Hopefully, if it does make it to the coast in the 10 to 15 day forecast, uh, we might see an enhancement of some shower activity, say Cairns northwards from it. Interestingly, once again out to day 10, we're starting to see evidence and signs of a new low trying to develop in the Joseph Bonaparte Gulf or the far northern Kimberley. So that will definitely need to keep an eye on that in the medium to longer term. But at this stage, folks, our, all, our, all eyes are on the northwest parts of Australia and the Pilbara coastline. Thanks for watching this update. We have a subscriber update in the morning tomorrow. We'll have another public video update on this particular system tomorrow night. So if you want more in-depth view at what could happen with this system, uh, please check out our subscription where you'll gain access to more frequent video updates as well as uh, things like our weather centre and rainfall tables, rainfall maps on all of our weather pages on our Queensland Northern Territory WA weather regions. Thanks again for watching this update, folks. Uh, as I say, head to oscyclonechasers.com.au if you'd like to subscribe. Otherwise, I'll talk to you again tomorrow night.